<laughs> Hi there and welcome to Pure Hangouts. I'm Sophie Seawright. I'm the content editor here at Pure London. If you're still thinking about coming down to Pure to join us at Kensington Olympia, you can still do that. We've got two days to go. In the meantime, I'm really excited to be joined here by Stephen Bethel, who's the CEO of Beyond Retro, which is one of my favourite brands. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. us, Stephen. I know you've made the long much. trip from Canada, so it's yeah, much appreciated. Yeah. Yo, thank you very much. We are at the show, so if you can hear background noise, apologies for that. Clinking of glasses, they're setting up the networking behind us, so uh, bear with us. So Beyond Retro are such an exciting brand. We're going to talk a little bit today about uh, the circular economy, which I know is really important to Beyond Retro. But can you just kick off by telling me a little bit about yourself and, and the brand? So the Coles Notes version is uh, Beyond Retro has been part of the East London fashion scene. We are a vintage warehouse in East London, and we have three stores in London, one in Soho, one in Dalston, and one in Brick Lane, and one in Brighton, and five stores in Sweden. Um, and uh, we're just really lucky to be part of, and this is our first time coming to Pure. First day, it's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want. And if you are coming down to Pure, do go and check out Beyond Retro because they've got some fantastic stuff in there. We should probably throw in it. We're in G40. G40. Go to <laughs> G40. So, Stephen, can you just tell me a little bit about what the circular economy means in the fashion industry? Because I know that the circular economy is sometimes associated with other industries more than fashion. So what does it mean to you? So the interesting thing about um, the garment business is that garments represent, textiles represent 7% of the waste stream. And the circular economy is about trying to figure out how we can get that 7% out of the waste stream and re recirculate it back in it. Beyond Retro for the last 13 years has been about taking the most relevant items out of that, that stream and putting them in East London or putting them in Stockholm and putting them in Gothenburg. And the circular economy is about trying to get extra life out of garments. It's, it's about getting that circular to go on. Because the amazing thing about Pure is there's an am amazing amount of really great designs, really great product being there. But at one point in time, there'll be a decision, what do we do with this once it's no longer wanted in somebody's cupboard or closet? And that's what, that's, what the, that's what the circular economy is about. How do we keep that circle keep going? Mm -hmm. So how do we get it to go from cradle to cradle rather than cradle to grave. grave yeah okay and obviously you're known as a retailer but you're here as a wholesaler how, how do those two sides of the business differ for you so the exciting thing is that um, it, we're in a really uh, cherished position as a potential wholesaler that we having 10 stores in two different countries uh, with with an exciting offering we can tell immediately within our own doors what sells well and doesn't sell well so when we're a wholesaler, we can go to a customer and say, look, we know that this item has, for example, this patch suede uh, skirt that we're making um, has a 70% sell through in our store. And unlike many other wholesalers who don't have that retail strength, we have the strength to be able yeah. to say, it's beyond retro. We know that this sells, we know, we know what sizes work, we know what colors don't work. Yeah. That's, that's absolute gold dust. As a wholesaler, it's very difficult to do. So it's great that you, you have that option. It's really cool. So from a, from a circular economy perspective and the, and the kind of reuse and upcycle side of things, how would you recommend our retailers, so that the visitors who are coming to the show, how can they participate in that, aside from buying your products? What, what would you recommend that they do? You know, I, th I think that it's important that we all participate in a new way of looking at clothing. The clothing isn't just something to be worn and then discarded in a season. That it's something that we've got to, as a as everybody take a responsibility and figure out, just like we do with a glass or cans um, or your, your bottles, somehow we understand with that that it's got to be rotated back. So I'd encourage, for example, if a retailer was, uh, for argument's sake, in, uh, in Brighton, mm -hmm. to go to a local charity shop and say, listen, if I collect clothes for you, can I bring you those, bring you those clothes? Offer to their customers a 10% discount if you bring in a bag of clothes that helps a local charity in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They bring back a, a, a bag of clothes. Those clothes, then you, they, the retailer would donate it back. But it's the retailer wins by bringing bodies into their store. The retailer wins by taking responsibility for selling product in their community. But also, the retail demonstrates to the community that they're an affected member, that they understand that they're part of the community. And the, even better is they're going to help a local charity in their own community. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really simple thing to do and it yeah. would create a circularness about the garments they sell. Yeah. And I, and it's exciting. You know, 25 years ago that wouldn't be something that was an, not an option for retail. Yeah. But it is an option now yeah. uh, throughout the UK. And it's got the commercial benefit in that 
25 years ago, the high street was not as ruthlessly competitive as it is now. And creating that local community and understanding among your local community that you're there and that you're active with them, you're kind of on their side, is really invaluable. And so that there's that kind of upside as well. So I think it's really interesting things to address. And in terms of Beyond Retro, um, can you tell me how that fits into what you're doing in a, in a kind of logistical and practical way? How does the design and manufacture process work within that? So one of, one of the things that we're excited about, our, our business about, um, about Vintage, is that we're, what we're doing on a season by season basis is trying to find a uh, product that meet the trends. I mean, things that we're really excited about, suede skirts, this can't get enough suede skirts for this fall. And we can only find so many in the, in the vintage grade. What we've been doing is now actually taking a real, a new look at the way garments can be made. And we're actually going and taking old suede jackets that are, are either too big or out of shape or undated, and we're remanufacturing. We're actually re-looking at the way we can make an offering to our customer. We're participating at a high level in this circular economy. We're taking something that's no longer relevant and we're making a very relevant thing mm -hmm. out of an old thing. Three years ago, we were making five, 600 pieces a month. Mm -hmm. We're now making 10,000 garments a month. That's incredible episode. Across 50 different SKUs. And not only that, our customers are loving it. The sell-through is really good on it. So we're demonstrating, we're demonstrating that the circular economy has real value, that we can deal with this 7% of the waste stream. And, it, and the waste stream is not just about the 7% that what do we do with it? Do you know that every time you make a pair of jeans, to grow the cotton for a pair of jeans takes 1,600 liters of water. Such an outrageous figure, isn't it? It just completely blows your mind. 1,600 liters of water. So if we can actually relook at an old pair of jeans and make it into a more relevant item, and save that 1,600 liters, save the pesticides that have to be put on a field to grow the cotton. If we can re-look at it, it's got real value. And, and beyond retro, I'm so proud of what we've done over the last 13 years about participating in an economy, about reusing the items and making it relevant. And now we're going one more step, which is about remanufacturing items to not only save the 7% waste stream, not only save the water consumption, not only save the fossil fuel consumption, but we're making really relevant clothes and we're doing it at an affordable level. Yeah, avoiding the kind of hemp caftan type vibe that we talked about on the phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, and, and, and hemp and I, has its place, but you know, it's, it's a different category. I, I think the, the place that we start from this is that we, we're very lucky that within Beyond Retro, we have a trends department that are, are, are ferocious choosing the next idea, the next trend, the next concept. And I don't, it, it's, it's a very difficult uh, business that we don't want to be a recycler. What we are is a fashion brand who is lucky enough to participate in the circular economy. Mm -hmm. And this, I, as I say to our team members continually, this isn't about um, us, uh, uh, about the uh, inner smile. This is about us making pretty clothes that allows us to have an inner smile. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And to me, that sounds like it might be a relatively expensive process, designing clothes that are made from old clothes rather than made from fresh, cheap fabric how does the how does the kind of cost work out for you guys the the exciting thing about the the modern era is and and often we talk about the negatives that are about waste and recycling but actually what's exciting about uh clothing these days is that it's actually being consolidated and collected and going to massive sorting centers so this is actually one of the first times in history where actually mass producing um an item is actually achievable because all the clothes are going to these one facility or a handful of facilities where they're sorting literally millions of pounds of clothes a week. But it is, is it uh, cheaper than making new clothes? Absolutely not. Is it comparable? Absolutely. And our average price point for our product is about 35 pounds. So we're certainly nicely placed amongst the other uh, high street brands. And our product is relevant, it's unique, because every single one of these will be slightly different. The block will be the same, but it'll be slightly different. Yeah. So is it, uh, is it expensive? Is it complicated? Absolutely. But is it achievable within the same price point as the other one? Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And we were chatting about this beforehand because you share my views on the importance of price and cost in achieving true sustainability and true scalability. Because if you have an extremely expensive but very sustainable product, there's only so far that we can really go with that in terms of reaching a mass market with a with a true circular economy appeal. You know, I, I believe that um, I believe that um, you can't start a revolution on a dress that's 150 pounds. 
there are a lot of really great uh, brands that have delved into um, uh, ethical fashion and remanufacturing. But you know, that, for example, this kimono that that we have uh, that we've re uh, remanufactured from a hippie uh, hippie skirt, like a, an Indian skirt. It's like uh, this we would sell for thirty five pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't believe a revolution, and this is imperative to what may, has made Beyond Retro successful for 13 years in the UK, is a revolution is not gonna be fashion on a 150 pound dress. If we can make the revolution accessible to people, to the 35 pound category, that's when a real revolution is gonna yeah. happen. That's Especially because the really young people who are gonna drive a revolution in the future, they're, they're the ones with the tightest price bracket. So it's so important to be able to appeal to them. So I think it's really exciting. What you're Absolutely, I, you know, I, we believe that, um, that it's, it's critical that we make a product that is accessible to that young audience. Our audience is 18 to 30, and we wanna make a product that not only is uh, not only is relevant, not only is well made, uh, but it's got to be accessible. Uh, this little vest uh, we sell for forty pounds at Beyond Retro, and it's a fully remade vest from an old uh, suede uh, suit jacket. So it's got uh, a relevant design. Where did suede suit jackets go? <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't they still with us? However, this is nicer. Uh, well, they got <laughs> puffy sleeves, you know, I mean, the market's it's not the most flattering garment. <laughs> but no, it's so cute. I love that little vest. I think it's really, really sweet. And can you just tell me a little bit about your the manufacturing process? Because I know you have a really interesting and actually very exciting relationship with your manufacturing, um, your, your establishments, your, your facilities, which is quite unusual. Yeah, and I, I think this is really quite exciting. Because we were trying to make a garment in a completely different way, we actually had to approach the way in which our relationship was with the factory, we had to rejig because we couldn't just go to a new manufacturer and say, "Okay, we're going to send you 5,000 uh, suede uh, uh, jackets, and we want you to remake them into this." So what we did is we actually changed the relationship between the way our changed the relationship between us, the designers, the customer, and the and the manufacturer. So we actually brought on team members. Uh, in India, who are our team members who work with us, alongside of us, who develop the product and, and manufacture the product for us. So we've changed the relationship so that we don't just come up with a spec pack and send it off aimlessly to four or five different uh, countries to say, what can you do this for the cheapest? Mm -hmm. We work with our team in India to actually develop the product. These are our team members. Our Beyond Retro logo is on the company, on the factory wall. Mm -hmm. These are people that we work with day in and day out, and frankly, they add a lot of value. Our, our master tailor has 35 years of experience. And because we're doing something different, he's highly engaged. He's excited about it, yeah. He's excited about it. He's, he knows that we're doing something different. He knows we're doing something innovative, and he knows of the importance of the sustainability. And that's, it's fun as a team, even though the team is in Sweden, and the team is in London, and the team is in, uh, in India, and teams in Canada, as, as a global team, we've come together to try to solve this riddle of what do we do with this stuff and how can we make it more relevant. And going to the circular economy, I think it's, it's critical going forward that we figure this out as a society. What do we do with the 7% of the clothes? And it, it can't just go into the landfill. We've got to be able to figure out how we can change it into something else. How do we make it more relevant? How do we take all the amazing stuff that's at Pure Today and in 15 years, turn it into something else that's relevant for the youth of that of that market. And, I, and what's exciting about Beyond Retro, we've just uh, finished um, a period where we've now sold our 100,000th remade garment in our own stores. So that's 100,000 garments that we uh, saved from the landfill. It's 100,000 garments that we didn't have, have to have watered or regrow new jeans. It's 100,000 garments that we re-institution to put into our, our product. And the best part is the customer is telling us they love the story and they love the product. They love the designs. I, and I'm, I, I feel very lucky. And I, you know, it's only my first day here at Pure. Um, I've never shown at Pure before. The reaction, if I just had one day at Pure as I've had today, Pure was definitely an absolute uh, gratification. It was amazing. We've had uh, people who wanted to place orders, People who want to get behind the story, 
it's been a great showcase to tell the story about labels. I'm really excited to hear that because as we were chatting about just beforehand, it's not easy exhibiting for the first time at a big trade show. And the fact that you've had such a successful first day, I think really demonstrates that you've got an exciting story to tell. It gives you a nice hook to chat to people about. Oh, and I imagine the retailers can see that in their store, they're going to be able to talk about your product in an interesting way, which, you know, from their perspective, that they're here to buy clothes that are going to make the money apart from anything else. And the fact that you've got a lot of interesting stuff to say and your product has a lot of interesting stuff to say, it's got a strong story in itself, is, is such a great selling point for them. So it's, yeah. you know, it's a fantastic USP. Having, having Having a, a great designs, so I'm lucky that the team uh, in, in London and Sweden are coming up with great designs. Having a great story that wraps around the designs. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty shocking that somebody holds up a garment in a room full of amazing designs and says, you know what, this is clever. And I think that the circular economy and innovation is about being clever. And I, you know, it's intimidating. You look at some of the other brands. There's some amazing it's brands. so beautiful stuff here, isn't oh, it? <laughs> and people that I've looked up to and go, oh, look at their booth. And yeah. their booths are enormous. They've yeah. obviously put a lot of energy into it. But being lucky enough to be, you know, part of Pure, but being lucky enough to have a team, my team was excited to come to Pure. Yeah. We set up a, uh, a booth at uh, G40, which is unlike anybody else's booth. Go G40. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, small plug. I, you know, I, I'm... And it's, it's pretty exciting to be here. And it's pretty exciting to have a story about this circular economy and, and to go back to telling the story that this is a problem that we all need to, need to, to figure out. I'm going to ask you one final question, and it's a personal one. Uh -oh. well, I know that you, you, you run lots of businesses. You run a really large business, but I can see that you're very passionate personally about this one. Um, can you tell me what your favorite thing about Beyond Retro is as a, someone who works there? You know, my favorite thing about this, about about our company, about Beyond Retro, is being able to go to the shop floor a year ago and you had a young lady that was working in the shop and she was excited about the designs we were doing. And I said to her, look, do you want to come and do a three month internship doing designs? She came on, did a great job in three months. Six months later, she's working in the factory, helping in India. She's now an assistant designer. And I look at that and I just, I smile because Somebody who's, who's young, who's innovative, she's contributing. She came to me a month ago and said, you know, out of all my friends, I have the best job. That's and awesome. Forget about anything else. That's bloody amazing. It's an awesome thing to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and then that's, that's victory right there. Yeah, that's I mean, definitely a win. Yes, As an employer, that's a complete win. Yes, we're saving the, we're doing a lot for the environment. Yes, we're making relevant clothes. Yes, it's lovely to see a young lady walk down the street wearing one of your garments to improve and to kind of unleash the power that around, that's, that's fucking victory. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much, Stephen, right, for, for so sharing that with me. It was right. really a pleasure to chat to you. Okay. Do come down to Pure London. My Twitter is at London Sophie. Uh, these guys are at Beyond Retro UK. We're at Pure London. Uh, come on down tomorrow or on Tuesday at Olympia London. Thank you so much.